Welcome to the next video in the discrete math video series. This is video 15, where we're just solving the exercise introduced in the previous video. So we want to give examples of a tautology contradiction and contingency using the minimum number of symbols. And so, uh, you know, to get a tautology, I can't do it in any fewer symbols than p arrow p or p biconditional p. So either of those would count as a minimum number of symbols to get a tautology. p conjunction negation p is the fewest uh, symbols that I can use to generate a contradiction. And then simply the sentence p all by itself, that is a contingency, and that uses the fewest number of symbols. Okay. For the following, we are going to just decide whether they are tautology, contingency, or contradiction. And although you might be able to answer this very quickly, just right off the top of your head, uh, let's just go through the exercise of building the truth table for each one and seeing that they come out true at every row of the truth table. So here's the first one, P arrow P. And we just need two rows. That's nice, all right? There's only a single symbol. We copy over the truth values underneath uh, P and then fill in the truth values that are underneath the arrow based on the conditional rules. And both of them come out true. Make sure that you understand why. But there you see that every row of the truth table makes the arrow come out true. And so that's a tautology. Next, we look at the negation of the previous proposition. And uh, a shortcut here is that we'll just reuse the truth values from the previous calculation, not go through all the intermediate steps, and then simply negate those getting false, false, and that's a contradiction. So the second one is a contradiction, kind of obvious, but this is just a very basic sort of warm up exercise. Uh, and then finally, we do the contingency, which is just the simple uh, proposition P, and it could be true or false. That is neither a tautology nor a contradiction, so so that's a contingency. Oh, uh, actually, I guess, uh, sorry, I'm now realizing that uh, what the, the assignment was to do P disjunction Q, and I did just the simple sentence P. Oops. Well, uh, it shouldn't be too hard, right? You do the truth table of P disjunction Q. You should get true on the first row, false on all the others. There should be four rows this time. And, uh, and since there's some true, some false, then that means it's a contingency. And, you know, since that's just basically the truth table of the disjunction, then I don't feel like I need to necessarily go and write that out. I think that should be relatively clear. So moving on, we'll do the problem marked uh, number three. The negation of a tautology is always a, now probably it's pretty easy to predict this, but it's going to be a contradiction. And the reason is just because if it's a tautology at every row, then when you uh, negate that tautology, then you're going to compute the negation of true at every row. So at every row you get false. And since it's false at every row, that's a contradiction. Okay. How about the negation of a contingency? Well, at some row, it's going to be true. And there you negate it and you get false. So at some row, the negation is false. Also at some row, it's going to be false somewhere. You negate it, get true. So the negation is going to be true at some row. So anyway, short, uh, short version of that is that at some row, the negation of a contingency is going to be false. At some row, the negation of a contingency is going to be true. Since it's got a mix of true false, then the negation of a contingency is always a contingency. Okay, and then finally, the conjunction of a tautology and contradiction is always a contradiction because at every row you're going to get true conjunction false, which evaluates to false, and so the result is that it's false at every row. 